Hello and welcome to another episode of All the Extremist. This right here is the Western Prairie Rattlesnake, one of the deadliest snakes in the world. One bite from him and I'm dead in as little as two minutes. My cameraman Rico happens to be highly allergic. Let's pick him up and play. Let's see what happens. He's angry! He's angry! Oh, Rico, why'd you have to grab him like that? Now we gotta go to the hospital. Oh, there he's going. He's moving. He's moving underneath. Oh, dang it. He went down in. Ow! Oh. Look how big that snake is. There's actually two snakes here, which terrifies me. I'm gonna lie. I wonder how many freaking snakes there are around me, but I'm gonna get that big one if I can. He's moving back in. Better flick it out. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh crap. We're not gonna. Oh, he's there. Is he still there? Yep, get around. You on him? Yep. Okay you guys, so these are called Western Prairie Rattlesnakes. And typically they only get about two feet long and they're usually pretty small. That is a very, very large western prairie rattlesnake. The biggest I've ever seen was probably four feet long. And that's a pretty big one right there. We have been up here for, what Rico, maybe like 20 minutes total from when we left the truck to when we got here. And we've already killed two snakes. I could easily go around and just slaughter snakes right now. But that's not my point. I'm going to take these home. I'm going to eat them. We're going to use them. We're going to use the skins. I'm going to make something out of them. Just because it is legal to kill these snakes doesn't mean we should just slaughter them all. Leave them alone if you see them on the trails. If you have to flick them off the trails with a stick or stand there and warn people, you don't have to kill them. Don't kill them unless you're going to eat them. I, I always say that if you're going to use it, it's okay. But if not, leave it alone. Rattlesnakes are notoriously stringy and rubbery, kind of like an octopus or a squid if you don't cook them right. We're going to do some slow and slow cooking. And then we're also going to do, uh, just fry them like I usually do. And we're going to see which one's better. This is a really fat snake for a Western Prairie snake. I'm really excited to get this thing in my belly. How you skin these snakes is really easy. You just start where the head was. You work your way all the way down the body to the tail, right along the belly, right through the middle of the belly. Once you get to the tail, stop and then peel it off the body. Throw the guts away. You're good to go. I wish I could show you how to do it on YouTube, but this is... Uh, a little too sexy for what YouTube would allow me to do. After you skin it, you can actually just use these skins. And a really quick way, an easy way to tan these is you just get antifreeze. Make sure it's not green, make sure it's gold or, or something similar to that because otherwise it'll miscolor this skin and it'll look really ugly. All you gotta do is put these skins in antifreeze for one to two weeks and then you stretch them out like you would any other hide. Don't stretch them too much because they are very, very fragile. Once you have done that, your snake skin's good to go and it's preserved. Here is the end result of the fried rattlesnake. As you can see, it is pretty crispy, kind of like a bacon strip that's been mutated somehow. I cooked it with some uh, butter and some salt and pepper and everything bagel seasoning, which is good on everything. Let's see how it tastes. Kind of like a fishy chicken. A little more chickeny than fishy. You want to try some, bud? What does it taste like? I, I, I just said. You know, honestly, if you work this hard for this small amount of a meat, it's really not worth it unless you're trying to prove something. And I'm not trying to prove anything, but the fact that I'm a man. And I shouldn't have to prove that, but it was really good. I mean, it's tasty. It's just not a lot of meat on these things. Okay, so next up is the low and slow boiled one. And it, I just boiled it whole. It kind of looks weird. It smells like teriyaki, like Chinese teriyaki food, which is really weird, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Let's see how it goes. This one's definitely a lot more fishy than the other one, but it's still really pretty mild. Oh, I can see the BB in there. Honestly, if you were in a survival situation, <laughs> A rattlesnake is just not that practical. Like, there's a little strip of meat all the way along the spine, and then there's lots of meat in between the ribs. But getting that out of there, you basically just gotta eat the ribs. And it's like getting those sunflower seeds that you haven't, like, chewed the seeds off of yet, and then swallowing them. It's kinda hard and it hurts your throat. But, 
they taste good. My wife likes it, my kids like it. It's a really fun thing to do once or twice a year, but it's really not that practical as far as in a survival situation because there's not a lot of calories in here. Most of the dietary substance would come from the butter and everything else that I put on it, not the meat itself. Like and subscribe, get out there, have fun, hike lots, hunt lots, and eat lots of Twinkies.